first of all, I bought this yesterday. Oh, okay. With Thanks. my debit card. <laughs> uh, Thank you very much. Present. In the year 2099, December 31st, how, when I walk into a store, hopefully, how will I pay for that? Well, I think you'll be walking into a virtual store, and, and most products will be virtual, uh, even food and clothing and everything we need uh, will be virtual. Uh, the, the era of three-dimensional printing is, is already coming, and we'll be able to download a design for clothing and then print it out, and there'll be uh, open source forms of, of information, so open source clothing that you can download mm -hmm. and then print out with three-dimensional printers at, at a few pennies per pound. Uh, so well before 2099, just about all the physical things we need will be information files. So already I can email you a book or a movie or a sound recording, and I'll, I can actually email you today a violin or a guitar, and you can print it out in a three-dimensional printer. There's a band that has all three-dimensional uh, 3D printed instruments. Yep. Um, pretty soon, all the physical things we need, certainly by the 2020s, will be information files. And uh, you'll pay for these with online forms of purchasing, and you'll be able to buy them on online stores. I mean, already online shopping, even for things that we don't print out, uh, is ubiquitous, uh, and that's growing very rapidly, and re physical retail is coming down. Yeah. People still like to go in to feel the clothing and try it on themselves, but uh, we'll be able to take a three-dimensional scan of our bodies and actually see in 3D an avatar of ourselves and see how the clothes looks. And we won't be limited to just the things on the rack and, oh, I love this shirt, oh, it's not available in my size. You'll be able to design, see the clothing on your avatar, then actually have it printed out in not only the right size, but in the exact shape for your body. So and what about the very real pleasure that I personally get from champagne? Will that be gone? Well, virtual reality is another emerging technology. Uh, so already we can do what we're doing now in terms of being together. And there's technologies rather than just sort of, uh, you know, having images on the screen like with Google Hangout, I can actually sit and look around you and feel like I'm together. There are primitive forms where we can touch each other. Uh, once virtual reality goes inside our brains, and that's, that'll be here by the late 2020s, uh, and basically, I mean, my brain doesn't directly feel things, there's signals going into my brain. We can actually trap those signals yep. and actually send into the brain signals representing a virtual environment. And so the computer will actually create the environment and then we can be virtual actors in a virtual environment uh, and do any of the things we do in real reality, like be together, t hug each other, whatever, uh, in, in a virtual environment. Uh, we can eat in a virtual environment and have that sensual experience because our brain is receiving these signals as if they were coming from the real world, but it's actually the virtual world. You'll have a body in the virtual world, but it doesn't have to be the same as your physical body. So if you go into something like Second Life today, already people have avatars representing them and they can look different. Now the avatars over here, although psychological experiments show that people actually identify with that avatar, but in the future it'll actually be like this is my body and like I'm looking, but I'll actually have a different body couple could become each other, for example, and experience their relationship from the other's perspective. But you'll be able to do the things like eating that you mm -hmm. do in real reality and have that sensual experience in a virtual environment. If we move a bit closer to the present time, I'd like, um, I'd like you to, um, you've said that um, when the timing is right, timing is, is vital for technology. Mm -hmm. And in, in that light, I would like to hear your viewpoint on emerging payment system such as Bitcoin that changes the paradigm of who's controlling what? Well, bit Bitcoin is interesting because it's not just a payment system, it's a, it's a whole currency. Uh, <coughs> but I mean, uh, everything is going virtual and already we pay for most things, even just using credit cards, or, uh, PayPal and so on, we, we pay for things online. That's going to increase over time. Uh, you know, our cell phones will be able to pay for things. Uh, and uh, so we won't need to handle currency and, or even carry physical devices around. Uh, we'll be able to pay for things virtually. Uh, the nature of currency is interesting. I mean, what is currency? It's an agreement of, 
uh, it's basically yeah. a big agreement system among people that everybody respects. You know, even say terrorists who, who have very different views of society than the mainstream society, everybody respects money. It's this big system of, of agreements that we have. Uh, and that will, con and it's already been broken away from some kind of physical uh, entity like gold. Mm -hmm. It's already a very kind of theoretical uh, concept. Um, but certainly payment is, is, is already going online. But, but what we're seeing is something being decentralized as opposed to you have a, like the Federal Reserve or, or our national bank that sort of runs the show and, and, and guarantees the value of, uh, of this currency. Well, you brought up a good uh, term, decentralization. That's the nature of the future. The 21st century technologies are decentralized rather than centralized. So the internet is decentralized. Some piece of it goes down, the information just goes around it. There's an inherent stability to decentralized technology. There's new water technologies where right locally you can uh, create very clean water at very low cost. Uh, Dean Kamen's slingshot machine costs $2,000, can meet the water needs of 100 people. They're already putting it in third world countries. Uh, Coca-Cola has gotten behind that can take any kind of water, swamp water or salt water, yeah. and, and create drinkable water at very low cost. Uh, decentralized energy is coming. Solar power is doubling every two years. It's already over 1% of our energy. And people say, oh, 1% is kind of a fringe player. They're ignoring the exponential growth. 1% is only seven doublings from 100%, and it's doubling every two years. And then, so I presented this to the Prime Minister of Israel recently. He was actually in my class the 1970s at the MIT Sloan School, and he said, Ray, do we have enough sunlight to do this with? And I said, yes, we have 10,000 times more than we need. So we're actually awash in energy, we're awash in water, uh, they're just not in usable form, but the technologies to make them usable are growing exponentially. 20 years from now, we'll get all of our energy from very low-cost renewable sources, and they'll be decentralized. Water will be decentralized. Food will be created in decentralized vertical agriculture, automated facilities. So, uh, so all, all these um, really big global politics on energy and, and fossil fuels and how we would drive our cars, are, is everybody running in the wrong direction? Will technology solve these problems? I don't think they're running in the wrong direction, but I think a lot of the concerns that, oh, we're running out of energy and so on are, are wrong, because uh, they're ignoring the emerging decentralized solutions uh, that ultimately be very low cost, and they're based on information technologies. Solar power is being uh, promoted by nanotechnology, which is a form of information technology, and the costs are coming down dramatically, and the, and the amount is going up exponentially. Uh, it's really these exponentially growing decentralized technologies that will solve the major challenges of humanity. So with regards to um, your job at Google, mm. and, and uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. So, so, so what, what, what is it like? What do you do there? Well, I was actually presented my latest book uh, to Larry Page, How to Create a Mind. Mm -hmm. We met in July. He, met, he read an early version, a pre-publication version. He really liked it. And he invited me to join Google to basically apply those ideas to creating you know, artificial intelligence. Uh, to really guide the future of, of Google. Uh, the goal is to base, increasingly base search and question answering on the actual meaning of documents and not just finding keywords. Mm -hmm. If you write a blog post, you've got some content to share. You're not just creating an interesting bag of words. We would like to actually understand and model the semantic meaning of your blog post and all the other billions of pages on the web and all the billions of book pages. And so that you can actually talk things over uh, with your search engine, it will really understand at a deep level what you're looking for, and will understand all the information that's out there and find information not just based on keywords. A lot of people at the moment uh, seem concerned about privacy, and you have this people I think uh, see them as uh, the, the sort of evil machines that knows everything about me, and especially the company that, that you work for knows tons about me and privacy. What, how will that develop? Will I just have to say, okay, as when, I'm, when I'm not in a Swedish forest and totally not connected, mm -hmm. uh, it's goodbye privacy or, or? Well, not at all. I mean, uh, this tremendous effort at Google to maintaining privacy, and there's literally thousands of engineers to keep uh, information private 
And it's not just to keep it private within Google, but to prevent outside forces coming in and accessing that information. And that's a complicated technical problem, but uh, information at in Google is actually very secure. Uh, and the goal is to bring each person valuable services so that you can find the information that you need. You can find the pizza place. You can get help with your reservations. And uh, your car can drive itself. And we want to deliver real services. It's not the intention to invade privacy. It's actually a, a, a very great, great trust. Half a billion people use Gmail. And uh, so Google takes that very seriously and wants to provide services that you want mm -hmm. uh, without using the information for anything else. And, uh, so I'm not the expert on explaining the privacy policies, but, but that is the goal, is to provide valuable services and, and to maintain the security of this information. Going back to the champagne, um, could you try and be very uh, specific and, and um, how, how will I pay for it? What will be the currency? What's the method? I think currencies are evolving. I mean, there's a particular algorithm behind Bitcoin, and you know whether that really holds up or not is unclear. But I think we will have decentralized forms of currency. That's Bitcoin is a is an uh, attempt to create a decentralized currency that's not controlled by by countries. Uh, I think we'll have emerging uh, currencies like that. We already have. You know, there's thousands of different stocks you can buy. That's a form of currency, and those mm -hmm. are decentralized. And, uh, so it's hard to predict what will catch on, but I think it will be de decentralized. And artificial intelligence will note that you bought a product and will adjust accounts accordingly. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of open source yeah. uh, information. Three-dimensional printing will print out the things we need. And so take clothing. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of, of really cool designs you can download for free, print out for pennies per pound on your three-dimensional printer. I can email you, oh, here's this great new shirt. Uh, and I can email it to you, and you can print it out. Uh, people will still spend money for proprietary forms. We mm -hmm. see that already in music and movies and books. There's millions of those f free products that you can have a very good time with, but people still spend money for their latest blockbuster or for Harry Potter or for music from their favorite artists. You have a coexistence of open source and proprietary forms of information. And that will be true in every industry. So what in this virtual world, what will what will value be like because you're, you're talking about that the price of everything drops and 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 you can sort of whenever the whole world is digitized you could just well it's for proprietary forms of information i mean look at music movies and books as a forerunner of that that's pure information and you spend money for a book and you get it as an ebook and it's just information now there's also free books and there's millions of free books. You could never finish reading all the free books. You still spend money for proprietary books because you want to read that book. And you're going to spend money for a hot design from the latest hot designer for clothing, even though you can get very good free designs. And you're going to have this uh, coexistence of open source and proprietary forms of information. And that's the, that's the, the nature of value, uh, information that people want to acquire and are willing to pay for. All right. Great. Thank you Thank very you. much. This bottle, when I when I went and bought it, I went into the store and said, "I love. I, can do you have a champagne that will keep till 2099?" <laughs> and he said, mm, "That's hard. That's a long time. You need to store it just right." But this is a 2004. I drank one just the other day. He said, oh. "It keeps it keeps well." Okay. Do you think that that you'll be able to uh, enjoy that bottle at that time? Uh, well, if not, we'll create one just like it.